What are your thoughts on sex and the frequency of sex and the expectations <laughs> of that? With him, it's the best. But I, this is coming out wrong. But what I mean is I have already been a sexual person my whole life. And my explorative nature, which isn't to like a crazy degree, just like with myself or the experiences I've had in relationships prior to him have made me come into this relationship with a very healthy relationship with sex already. So I didn't necessarily come into this relationship um, without in a, in a place where I couldn't meet his needs where his needs overwhelmed me to a crazy degree. Because if I was not a sexual being and was in this relationship, I don't think this relationship would work <laughs> because he is the most sexual being I have ever met um, and could have sex three times a day or go twice back to back. Right. And it's not quick either. <laughs> so it's like I... It has definitely amped up my endurance um, because I wasn't used to that before. But I already came into this relationship with a there is an experience that I'm sorry to talk about it in my beautiful podcast with my now partner. But it's honestly it. I think anyone listening could benefit from hearing it because it was um, an experience that did change me for the better that he's getting to reap the benefits of. Um, I was in a relationship when I was 20 um, where also at that time, my partner was a sexual being and I had just gotten off of work and I was tired and I said no to that night. I wasn't in the mood. And, um, he was very straightforward and not in a dick way, just like honest and straightforward about how being in the mood is actually a choice and you could choose to be in the mood. And he shared his thoughts on how when women say they're not in the mood too much, that is what eventually leads to your partner feeling unsatisfied in the relationship. And that's eventually why people do cheat to get their sexual needs met. And it was the first time I had ever had this conversation with any partner. And again, it what it didn't strike me wrong. Like it actually I didn't feel disrespected in my needs I felt like it was explained pretty well and it made me open-minded to trying to change how I felt in that moment again not to disrespect how I felt but to question myself and go could I change my mood right now like to actually explore if I could and I was able to Right. It's not to negate your feelings. Like you should just always have sex when somebody asks you to, but to understand that being in the... It is it a it, choice? It's like like a to ask myself like, yeah. wait, I am tired right now, but if I chose to not be, if I chose to explore this moment right now and not give in to my tiredness, would I find energy I didn't have if I didn't give in to my tiredness? I was just exploring my own thought because it's not in my nature to just succumb to men's needs. Mm -hmm. Like it's far from my nature. So... It was approached well. And when I realized it is a choice, oh, like I could choose to be in the mood and choose not to be, um, that benefited, that has benefited this relationship so much because there has been times where he was horny and wanted to have sex and I wasn't naturally in the mood, but I chose to be. And then it arrived. How do you do it? <laughs> um <laughs> It doesn't hurt to have a partner that you're really attracted to because I just also have to look at him sometimes and I can arrive to that choice. And that's not, that hasn't always been the case in the past. So like when it's not that case, when the attraction is so strong, I choose to think about how I could have this sexual experience, even if I'm tired. Like, I don't have to be in my fullest energy to have sex right now. It's not a performance. Yeah. yeah. It's a connection. I could have tired sex right now. Yeah. Like, it yeah. doesn't have to be um, your full battery is charged. And you could also communicate that. Like, I'm sleepy right now, but I'm still happy to be with you. I'm just going to lay on my side this whole time. <laughs> you know, or like, it's like you yeah. you could have sex in the experience that you're in. I think we often think, 
so many things need to be aligned right. to have sex. You have to feel completely confident. You have to have this mood going or like you have to be in this room. I don't know to everyone what their circumstance is, but you could have sex exactly where you are, yeah. you know? So I think that realizing that too is a part of being able to make that switch, that choice. And, it, and when you do that, is it a mental switch or do you, like when you know he's making a request and your natural energy says you're tired, do you then say, give me half an hour to do this routine that makes me feel great and pretty? Mm -hmm. Or is it like just, oh, in five seconds, I can just make myself? It's a pretty quick mental switch for me. Okay. Yeah. It also, re I remind myself too that it's connection lies in it. Like we, we reach more connection through sex. I could understand maybe if a woman is in a relationship where the sex isn't connective, why this choice might be hard. To be but like, why would I do this thing that I don't even enjoy that much? That doesn't get us closer, that it's not fulfilling for me in any way. Mm -hmm. But when I remind myself there is fulfillment in it for us and for me and for him, like it's kind of all fulfilling, it's easy to make that choice. Right. So... I think that that definitely adds to why the choice can be five seconds mentally. And it also though illuminates the fact that even when the sex is great and the attraction is there, you could still naturally feel like you're not in the mood yeah. until you consciously do it. Right. Because some people might interpret a woman not being in the mood, oh, this means she doesn't like having sex with me, yeah. or this means she's not attracted to me. Right. Those things may all be on 10, yeah. is that she just might be in a pattern of choosing not to or whatever, for whatever yeah. reason. And to be very vulnerable and open to, and I think we've talked about um, OCD before when I did a solo podcast with you, but sometimes for me, my OCD um, experiences can heighten in sex because I am challenged by OCD that is themed sexually. And so sometimes me not being in the mood is mental exhaustion because I have to work a lot mentally to stay present during sex. So sometimes it has nothing to do with attraction, nothing to do with tiredness, more physical tiredness, more than a mental like, ugh, it exhausts me sometimes to, but then I to have to not think about business or whatever. It's like push other thoughts out. I have yeah. to not be triggered by my OCD while having sex. Mm. Um, so that's a personal thing. And I also changed my mindset on that by seeing it as, a, as an opportunity to be present. I see sex as an opportunity to experience mental freedom. So instead of focusing on the exhaustion of the mental state I go through, I see it as an opportunity to find mental freedom. I switch the narrative. And today... I had that <laughs> <laughs> like I, I experienced great. it because I'm conscious about switching it too. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's really useful advice. I think a lot, just that section right there, yeah, a lot of people for can deal sure. with, right. And then now also are there advice that you could give to guys in general about creating the, the mood for the girl to be in the mood, like creating the conditions that would make her want to make that choice. Mm hmm. I know it's different for everybody because people have all kinds of different desires and kinks and whatnot, but yeah, just yeah. generally speaking from your perspective. Yeah. I think that things that he has done that have made me easily get in the mood is tell me compliments that are genuine from the heart throughout a day or at different points in our relationship. Like he has often told me that he thinks I am the most beautiful without makeup with my hair extensions not in and with no like glam going on. So that easily makes me get in the mood when I just get out of the shower and have no makeup on and my hair is not done and I'm not wearing anything specific. So I think for women, we definitely need to know how beautiful you think we are in our barest state. Otherwise we might feel, oh, I don't have my makeup on and I don't feel sexy and I'm not ready, so I'm not in the mood. Right, like I don't meet the pre-requirements for me to be worthy or, or when whatever. Got, or whatever. Like, yeah. if, they, if they've been in a relationship where they mainly get complimented when they're all ready, when the makeup's on and they look hot, quote unquote. Right. Um, so I think if the female in the relationship isn't complimented enough in her barest state, 
that that mood will switch off more often. So if we feel beautiful all the time, no matter what, that's a great way to keep your woman turned on. Yeah. Number one. That's great. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that specifically makes you not want to have sex? <laughs> Say it. No, I want to know too. Um, the only times that I've legit been like, we're not having sex right now, and one of them was recent, is when we were in a heated moment and it hadn't been fully resolved yet. And so unresolved drama. Un uh, yeah. Right. And then tell everybody what happens Stop. after. <laughs> it got resolved enough. <laughs> there was, I feel like there was, res if there's enough resolution in something that has caused some turmoil, then I'm not in the mood. But we've also sometimes talked about how when we have done this before, where we've talked about something we needed to resolve while we were having sex. Yeah. <laughs> it works. And it doesn't had, have to be just after it's perfectly buttoned up, then you have sex. It doesn't have to be before yeah. or yeah. after. It could be like, let's resolve this while we're making love. Because I've told him before, and this isn't true for him anymore, um, that he reaches the most tender state while we're making love. And when we're not making love, that way he speaks to me and that tenderness doesn't feel like it's there throughout the day. That's not true anymore because I've told him that enough where it's now showed up not only while we're making love, but at one point it was the best time to talk about things because he his guard got completely down. It's harder to argue when you're naked. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and when you're, I feel like, I don't, what is... What made you <laughs> reach that most vulnerable state, babe, when we were making love? And it's different. It's different when we're making love, obviously, you know, the naked thing helps, but I think <laughs> it, it, it's more emotional. We've always had, I think it's, this isn't for everybody, like you said, but it's, it's, we've always had emotional sex. However you want to call that, however somebody else wants to describe it, our sex has always been obviously physical, but emotional as well. I don't think there's ever a time where we haven't had emotions come through sex. And that's what makes it so great, you know, along with everything else. But that's a big part of it, too. And correct me if I'm wrong. So it's easy for both of us to get a little bit more vulnerable when we're already in that emotionally vulnerable state connectively through both of our bodies. So I think it was just easier at that point for us to be like, you know what, undress, boom, let's go. And then it gets resolved. I think something that has really helped us too as a couple is neither of us have anything that takes us out of the present moment that we need. I think that there is... Um, a lot of couples that might need to role play or go somewhere else or do something more to experience what they think they want or desire in sex. And I'm not shaming that. I also do think that sometimes that can put a filter though over your partner in their purest state and vice versa. And you guys being able to resolve something that you as a couple need to navigate if you're so used to experiencing your sex not being who you are. Mm -hmm. If you condition it to be, I'm going outside of myself for yeah. it, like I'm mentally or emotionally. Yes. Yeah. It can condition you to not be present. And yeah, the resolving things through sex might not be a clear opportunity if you mentally role play and go somewhere else and mm -hmm. don't practice being with each other mm -hmm. you are just enough i am just enough we are just speaking about each other as we are yes as a practice yes absolutely it makes a big difference because mm -hmm. you can do the same physical action but have such a different emotional and mental experience through it mm -hmm. wow wow this has been great i really like this format how do you guys like it 
I do. I like it a lot. I actually have one more thing for women that I want to say on this yeah? note that Go I think ahead. could really help them. Um, one thing I started doing before I met Jared in self-pleasure is I started to n not use any role play by myself either. I wouldn't think about any or I would practice not thinking about anything aside from my own touch and my own feelings from my touch and being grateful for my own body parts and the feelings and the sensations that are universe given and just diving into the experience just me to me not thinking this touch is someone else or I am over here and so the practice began with self I don't I don't know so much if that was the case for you too, baby, but for me it was. So that's how I as a woman have been able to then bring that into the bedroom with him where I am able to focus on his body in mine and the sensation that that creates together. And like there is actually so much to dive into. You don't need to think about other roles. You don't need to go other places mentally or physically like bringing your awareness just like you do with breath and yoga like just practicing those inward thoughts of where to focus your attention you can do with each other's body parts or th sometimes I in a sense practice reiki while we're doing while we're having sex like I'll think about him as a king and me as a queen and I'll think about how I'm receiving his energy and I'm like grateful that that's coming into me and I'm aware of what I'm giving back and I'll think about myself as a goddess while so there's a lot of spiritual practice yeah. that you could do too and when you do perceive sex that way if you are excited by spirituality you could then start to think about sex as a time to practice your spirituality which for women helps to be turned on more yeah, way. absolutely. We'll put a different context on it, right? Because yeah. our, our perception of an event essentially becomes the event, right. right? Like two people can watch the same football game, same exact thing can happen, but they could feel two very different ways about it, right? right? Same thing with a guy, yeah. Like a lot of times we're in such a conquering mindset that we imagine all these exterior things that we want that we forget that <laughs> there's something right here in front right. of you. Yeah, And I've absolutely. asked him before, like, what do you think about, are you present? He's like, I just, I'm looking at you. He was like, I'm right here. I'm like, oh, okay, so then you naturally just are present. I have to work at presence. I think that's an OCD thing too, though. For me. Part of it, yeah. Yeah. That, the OCD that I experienced, like I've had to work at presence more versus he doesn't have that experience. I have no reason to think about anything else except for you during sex. Which I've heard <laughs> that sometimes. I'm like, that must be nice because I, I have to actively get there. You think because your creative mind is always thinking about external creations? I didn't. I wasn't always this way. It's the it's the OCD mind, the obsessive compulsive yeah. disorder. That's what OCD stands for. For any listener right. that doesn't know what that is, um, and anyone that experiences it will completely understand what I'm talking about. And anyone that has it, it's it's just it's a constant state of intrusive thoughts. That's, that sounds pretty, I, I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and definitely. Every, and there's different themes yeah. to it too. So not to make this podcast about that and go too far off there, um, but it definitely makes you, sometimes that when I, I don't want to say overcome it because that could actually trigger OCD more, but when I just bring my awareness to a, a, a direction that's more satisfying and pleasing and fulfilling for me, um, and I get to see like, oh, that works, like, you know, I now get to see that sex is an opportunity for me to not be mentally exhausted because of the intrusive thoughts that come in, which I, if I perceive it that way, that experience happens over and over. But instead I go, this is an opportunity to experience how I experience pleasure and that I am able to be present and the opportunities of presence. And then I experience that. So I have been able to experience like mental freedom through perceiving it that way. That's beautiful. Oh, 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 oh,